You've come really far already, and really there isn't a lot to show for your work other than be able to draw glowing slice shapes when you move touches around the screen. But that's all about to change, so we're now about to create the interesting code. We're going to make the game actually create some enemies. Now you might very well be saying, but Paul, we just wrote the enemy creating code, and I never want to see it again. It's all this big old code up here. Lots of it, right? You're right. And to be fair, I don't want to see it again either, but it's a bit more complicated. You see, this create enemy method is going to create one enemy as required. The code we're going to write now will call create enemy in different ways so we get varying groups of enemies, just like we have with create fireworks in the Fireworks Night project. For example, sometimes we want to create two enemies at once, sometimes we want to create four at once. And sometimes we want to create five in quick sequence. Each one of those will call create enemy in different ways. There's a lot to cover here, so let's get started with a new enum at the top and say enum sequence type conforms to case iterable. And inside there we'll have case one enemy, no bomb, one, two with one bomb, two three, four, chain, and fast chain. And those are the various different kinds of enemies we're going to be working with. This first one, one no bomb, that means it'll be an enemy that's definitely not a bomb. One will mean might be a bomb, might not be a bomb. Two with one bomb means there's going to be two where one is a bomb and two are not bombs. And then two, three, four will happen to be a random enemies, plus chain, and then the same thing, another chain, but faster. Now these first two, one no bomb and one, will be used exclusively when the player first starts the game, to give them a gentle warm up. After that, they'll be given random sequence types from two with one bomb, through to fast chain. Now you should have noticed I slipped in a new protocol here, case iterable. This is one of Swift's most useful protocols, and it will automatically add an all cases property to the sequence type enum that lists all its cases as an array. This is really useful in our project, because we can then use random element to pick random sequence types to run our game. We're going to need quite a few new properties to make this plan work, so we'll start by adding those things. First we'll say var popup time equals 0.9. That's the amount of time to wait between the last enemy being destroyed and a new one being created. Next, we'll make a new property called sequence that is an empty array of our sequence type enums. And this is going to store which enemies are going to be created. Next we'll say var sequence position is zero. That tells us where we are right now in the game relative to our sequence array. Next we'll say var chain delay is 3.0. That'll tell us how long to wait before creating a new enemy when the sequence type is chain or fast chains. Now enemy chains won't wait until the previous enemies off screen before creating a new one. So it's like throwing five enemies quickly, but with a small delay between each one. Finally, we'll say var next sequence queued equals true. This is used so we know when all the enemies are destroyed and we're ready to create more. And now we can write a new method that will create the enemies for real. It's called toss enemies, and we'll write that now. We'll say func toss enemies, like that. And this thing is the actual work of creating multiple enemies on the screen. We're going to decrease both pop up time and chain delay by a small amount so the game gets harder as they play. Sneakily, we're also going to increase the speed of our physics world so objects rise and fall faster too. So we'll start by saying, pop-up time, star equals 0.991, and chain delay, star equals 0.99, and physics world dot speed, star equals 1.02. These are more magic numbers here, but I've tested them out, they work well, so the difficulty gets slowly harder. Next, we're going to read the current sequence position from our sequence array and then call create enemy in a number of different ways. We'll say let sequence type equals sequence at the sequence position and then switch sequence type. 
if we are at one no bomb, so the very beginning of the game, we'll call create enemy, saying we should never force a bomb. If we are in a one enemy, we'll just call create enemy. Because it might be a bomb, it might not be a bomb. If we have case two with one bomb, we'll say create enemy, forcing bomb never for the first bomb, for the first enemy, and then force bomb always for the second enemy. So there's one bomb, one not bomb. For the two case, we'll call create enemy twice, just like that. Uh, for the three case, we'll call it three times. I'll copy and paste that a few times, like that, boom. Uh, for the four case, same sort of thing, we'll just say uh, dot four, then create enemy four times, like that. So it's just simply calling the same thing again and again and again. And for the chain and fast chain cases, we're going to use GCD's async after method with some delay to create enemies over a period of time. So I'll say case chain, call create enemy immediately, so we have at least one enemy appearing straight away, but then use dispatch queue dot main dot async after, like that, Deadline's going to be dot now plus some divisor, and I'm going to use chain delay divided by 5.0. So when that runs, we're going to use a train close syntax. We'll say a weak self in, and then self question mark dot create enemy. So create an enemy after some delay has passed. In this case, one fifth of our chain delay. I'll then copy and paste that a few times, so we have the other bombs being made. So there's five bombs in total. I add some multipliers here. So it's divided by five. Second one we divide by five times two, then five times three, and five times four. So I'll space them out over a few different seconds as they're made, with one at the beginning being made, so it appears straight away. For the fast chain case, I'll use the same code again and just use dot fast chain, like that. But now we're gonna divide by 10. So it all happens slightly faster. Boom. Otherwise, the same code here for creating enemies using GCD. Regards to the case that was chosen, we'll say sequence position plus equals one, go to the next sequence item, and then next sequence queued equals false. Now the reason next sequence queued exists and the reason it's false here is because it means we don't have a call to toss enemies in the pipeline waiting to execute. It'll get set to true only in the gap between the previous sequence item finishing and toss enemies being called. Think of it as meaning, I know there aren't enemies right now, but more will come shortly. We can make our game come to life with enemies with two more pieces of code. First, we'll add some before the end of did move to view all the way up here. I told it was a big project. Uh, here we go, boom. We'll make our sequence. So we'll say our sequence is a default value of one with no bomb for sure, then another one with one with no bomb for sure, then two with one bomb, then again two with one bomb, then we'll do three, then we'll do one again, then we'll do a chain. And this is our starting sequence of the game. Start out with no bombs, then again no bombs, then one bomb exactly to work with, then another bomb, then three and one and chain and so forth. So players get a slow warm up to the game. And after that, we're going to add lots and lots of random sequence types. So it'll get thrown at it any kind of values from our sequence types enum, depending on what the randomness comes out as. This will mean the game will play for a long time until eventually they die. So we'll say four underscore in zero through 1000. So lots of moves. If let next sequence is sequence type dot all cases dot random element, then sequence dot append next sequence. At this point, we have our sequences all ready to go. The last thing to do is call toss enemies 
after a small amount of time has passed. So I'll say dispatch async after. The line now will be dot now plus two. And for our completion closure, we'll say weak self in self question mark dot toss enemies. So call that after two seconds have passed. Now this all cases property here is automatically made by that case iterable protocol we added earlier. It'll automatically be an array of one no bomb, one, two of one bomb, two, three, four chain and fast chain. So we can then use random element to pull out a random item from that enum. So that'll go ahead and start creating enemies after two seconds. But we need to make sure we remove enemies from the game when they fall off the screen. This is required because in this game, our new enemies aren't created until the previous ones have been removed. The exception here are enemy chains, where multiple enemies are created in a batch, but even then the game will continue until all enemies from the chain have been removed. So to finish this step, we're gonna modify our update method, which is way, way down here somewhere. Here we go. Uh, this is a good time to say, by the way, uh, this is a jump bar here. You can just jump around your methods. Here's update, just click there, jump straight to it. So in here, we're gonna say, if we have some active enemies currently, and they're below minus 140, i.e. way off the screen, get it out of the game and remove it from our active enemies array. If we don't have any active enemies and we haven't already queued the next enemy sequence, we can schedule the next enemy sequence and set next sequence queued to be true. So here at the top of the update method, I'm gonna write this. If active enemies dot count is greater than zero, so we have at least some enemies to work with, we're going to loop through the active enemies array in reverse and pull out the items and see what we have with them. We'll say for index node in active enemies dot enumerated dot reversed if node dot position dot y is less than minus 140 so it's very far at the bottom of the screen then we'll say node dot remove from parent but it's also going to get removed from this active enemies array. And that's where the index comes in. And that's why we're looping through this thing backwards. We'll say active enemies dot remove at that index. Remove it from the array as well. Else, if we have no active enemies currently, and if the next sequence is not currently queued, then we'll say dispatch queue dot main dot async after now plus whatever the value of pop-up time currently is and that gets faster over time and for our closure we'll say weak self in self question mark dot toss enemies and set next sequence queued to be true so we don't go ahead and call toss enemies again and again and again we remember it's been done we can wait for toss enemies to happen. And now all being well, the part you've been waiting extremely patiently for. I'll press Command R to build and run the game because hopefully now it should be getting close to being useful. We should see bombs and penguins appearing. There's a penguin, great. Another penguin. There's our bomb and our sound, nice. Another bomb and sound. Plus penguin. Three penguins, fantastic. Okay, that's all working really nicely. Oh, that's a chain there. Fantastic. And I think it's random, right? So it'll be random who knows what now. Let's find out, penguin by itself. Another chain, was that a fast chain? I can't tell anymore. Anyway, it's all working really nicely now, which is fantastic. 